Hello everyone, Miss Molly here for First Chapter Friday. Today we are reading Freddy vs. The Family Curse. Um, this one is by Tracy Badua and let's get to it. Freddy vs. The Family Curse, Chapter 1. There's nothing more heart-stopping than the wheeze of an empty glue bottle the night before a big school project is due. Come on, come on, come on. I shake the bottle and squeeze again. Not one white glob of grade-saving adhesive, not even a drop. I chuck the bottle toward my trash can. It sails clear over the heap of school uniforms on my bed, past an ankle-high stack of old notebooks and worksheets, and I miss. I thump my forehead down on the desk and sigh. My eyebrow lands in a wet smudge of green paint. The curse, it's gotta be the curse. Like straight black hair and those little chicken skin bumps on my upper arms. Bad luck is in my genes. I guess I should be thankful that at least my whole family tree board hasn't spontaneously combusted. I transfer my precious deck of Robo Warrior cards over to my bookcase just in case. My cards will stay nice and safe next to my Geography Bee participation trophy and the palm sized Virgin Mary figurine from Grandpa Carlo. Bad luck, curse or not, I need to finish this board to have any hope of keeping those Robo Warrior cards. Mom threatened to take the deck away if my social studies grade slips any further. After a worksheet fluttered down a storm drain and a report jammed our printer so badly we had to scrap the whole machine, I can't afford another missed assignment. That Robo Warrior deck is the only thing standing between me and total lunchtime isolation. The only thing that makes the other seventh graders forget years worth of my clumsiness and mishaps. I lean back and peer over at my cousin's open, lit up window. We live in an older and more crowded part of the suburbs, and the distance between my window and Sharky's is exactly 10 feet. If anyone would have glue, it'd be my perfect at everything cousin. I slide open the window. Music blares from the top of the line tablet Sharky gets to use when she's done with homework, a reward for her straight A pluses last year. Meanwhile, my parents' strict restrictions on screens, phones, tablets, and any digital connection to the outside world basically push me back into the Stone Age. The only reason I have a cell phone is so that they can tell me when they'll be late to pick me up after school. And that cell phone is now locked and docked in the kitchen, off limits the second we get home. I yell to my cousin across the small divide, Hey, Sharky, you there? I don't see her, but her voice sails between our houses. Leave me alone, Freddy. America's Dance Champs is streaming live. It's an emergency. There's a frustrated groan and the squeak of a chair before Sharky appears at her window. She's holding Auntie Sissy's Pomeranian biscuit. They both glare at me for the interruption. Sharky's already in her pajamas, a faded Yellowstone National, tea, National Park t-shirt from our family vacation two years ago, during which I stepped in bison dung. And purple bike shorts. You have 10 seconds. You got any glue? She shakes her head and her shiny black chin length hair swishes around her round light brown face. There was a brief time as preschoolers that she and I had the same bowl shaped haircut. I don't know if that old haircut is better or worse than the one that I sport these days. Sorry, fresh out, used the last of it on my board yesterday. She tosses a satisfied smirk, rubbing a handful of verbal salt into my wounds. She's the one who suggested I start my project earlier, but I spent the last few afternoons lost in a paperback Robo Warrior strategy guide. <sighs> I groan and roll my head back. Maybe your dad has some in the garage. He has everything in there, she adds. She's trying to be helpful, but the thought of digging around my family's overstuffed, cobwebby cavern of a garage grosses me out. She begins to shut the window. Good luck for your project. Her voice and the tinny pop music behind her fade away. The whole house trembles with a rumble of thunder. San Diego isn't known for its April showers, but now sheets of rain start to smack against the roof. I barely close my window in time to keep the carpet from getting soaked. My shirt looks like I tried to drink a glass of water and missed my mouth completely. I trudge towards the kitchen. My eyes rove the cluttered house for anything I could use to paste together this thick poster-sized board. The handwritten name and date plates and all those leaves I had to cut out for the tree visual. But dusty wine glasses, fake orchids, and a faded reprint of Da Vinci's The Last Supper aren't going to help me demonstrate my A-plus worthy, okay, B-plus if we're being honest, knowledge of the family tree. Mom sets down her tea with when my bare feet slap onto the ki cold kitchen linoleum. Her long black hair is pulled back into a ponytail, and she's got her purple-rimmed reading glasses on as she sports a pile of mail in front of her. There's even some mail stacked in the speckled gray countertop. A few weeks worth of ads and bills are wedged between the coffee maker and the microwave that's been unplugged for months. What's that saying? 
Mail, mail, mail everywhere and not a drop to drink, not a drop of glue. Mom frowns at the speck of paint on my brow. How's the project going, Freddy? Almost done? I shift from side to side. No point in fudging the truth about my procrastination. She'll find out anyway if I get a bad grade back on my progress report. Almost 99% of the way there. I'm out of glue. I wince as the I told you time and time again look that flares into her brown eyes. My eyes are like hers, though mine probably look a lot more nervous. Can you use a stapler? Her annoyance drips out with every word. Her mouth is a leaky faucet of disappointment. I shake my head, all out of staples. I used the last ones in my book report last week. I'd spent an hour fishing misshapen staples out of a faulty hunk of metal. The Ruiz family curse isn't the darkest, most dangerous one ever cast, but it makes my life a lot trickier. As if seventh grade wasn't tricky enough. How about rice, mom asks. I shudder at the memories of projects cobbled together with last minute rice substitution. I should have learned my lesson with, about keeping a full bottle of glue on hand after that lumpy white fang collage last year, but I'd rather take smeared sticky rice over the current alternative, a stick figure tree and a handful of loose paper leaves. If I don't find some adhesive soon, I might as well hand over my Robo Warrior deck to mom now and plan on eating lunch alone this week. Do we have any rice left? Mom lifts her teacup and takes a sip. Look with your eyes, not with your mouth, Freddy. I peer into the rice cooker and its permanent place of honor next to our free calendar we got from the Asian supermarket. The metallic gray pot is missing. What's the cereal on the floor, I ask, edging past the crunchy mound of sugary O's and cro to cross the kitchen. Mom shrugs. Your dad wanted something sweet after dinner and spilled, but we can't clean it up until morning. You know what Apong Rosing would say if she caught us sweeping at night. Sweeping out that fortune, I say, repeating the warning drilled into us by dad's superstitious grandmother. I leap over some already crushed O's and to reach the sink. My heart dives when I find the rice pot soaking, empty. We usually cook enough, enough rice to feed an army, but Apong Rosing must have had an appetite tonight of all nights. She tends to be hungrier on days that she has dialysis, a treatment that cleans her blood because her kidneys need a little help doing so. And none of us are ever going to deny our tiny but fierce elder a second or even third serving. Nothing left. Can't we go buy any glue? It'll be quick, I promise. A fresh clap of thunder rattles the sliding glass door. No way we're going out in this weather, Freddy. Other people don't know how to drive in the rain. She sets down her teacup. Besides, do you know how expensive gas is? Yes, Mom because dad grumbled about it when we got stuck in traffic on the way home today. I guess I'll check the garage then. Mom nods, good idea. Of course she likes Sharky's solution and not mine. And that is the first chapter of Freddy versus the Family Curse. If you like this story and you'd like to continue it, definitely stop by and see us and we'll pull it for you or uh, give us a call, we'll set it aside. All right, my friends, as always, have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next time. Bye.